I'm biased uh, because of the industry that you know I work in, but at the same time, I I've never been one of these data. Um, I've never been afraid of data, uh, and I think that comes from experience of knowing how to control your own data output or what you value your own data to be, uh, and what does that look like for you personally. I know what that looks like for me personally. I know that not, like not a lot of other people, or maybe the rank and file, don't. Um, but I my eyes widen when I think of uh, the possibilities that you can unlock with data, uh, especially mobile data um, uh, and uh, location data. Uh, I think, you know, mobile data is the one that is the, the one that I, I love the most because we're on our phones constantly. Uh, I don't know, you know, if you have kids, you know how much they, like, they gorge on their phones and you, you kind of see the mirror of yourself, but you're also on that phone as well as much. And that whole, that whole time that you spend on your, your phone um, tells the journey. So being able to take insights from there and then try to extrapolate it onto other learnings, other insights, uh, I think is super fascinating. I think one of the things that we didn't, we should be talking about a little bit more is not not the creep factor of data, like what did I eat for breakfast and having that same company serve me an ad for that breakfast item. It's more, okay, what did I eat for breakfast and what song did I listen to in the shower and what are my favorite news sources and finding the cross section of those people for uh, a brand that I'm interested in and serving them something that they've never seen before but you know based off of their behavior and based off of their activity that that's something that they like. I'm much more interested in not stalking people uh, but actually helping people uh, with, with their data. We're never going to 100% get data right. Uh, and that's because as long as there are humans involved in data, and I know that that's becoming less and less, there's still gonna be that element of application error. Uh, people who don't know what to do with the data. Now machine learning uh, and AI, that makes it easier. Uh, so the tools at humans' disposal to then you know, use data effectively become better. And I think we're, we're gonna see that in the next five to 10 years where people become a little bit more nuanced with how they choose to use the data, the creative messages that they use to serve uh, with that data strategy infused into it. Um, I, I think that we have to let go of the idea that it's this zero sum game where we're gonna get to a point where data is, oh God, thank God data, you know, thank God my data is being used in this way. Oh, I'll turn it all over now. It's never gonna happen. You know, there's always gonna be some people who, who hold on to that. Um, you know, really, really well. And it's not just with an older generation, it's with, there's certain pockets, you know, everything is cyclical. So there's certain pockets of younger generations, Gen Z, who are, they give up their data freely because they don't have a choice, really. They're, they're in many cases, young kids who, who wish that they didn't even have these phones or the social media platforms. It, it's a, almost a burden to them in some cases. Um, but at the same time, there's always going to be a part of the community, myself included, that uses data to help their efficiencies and whether it's productivity, finance, you know, leisure, uh, travel, like it, they use data to their advantage. And I think we have to find the right nexus of those people and then the people who are just kind of in the middle who don't really know how their data is being applied. But if you give them the right message, especially if it's served with rich video or uh, you know a carefully crafted video message that they'll that they'll respond to. The bright side about data is uh, you can use it to your advantage if you're smart about it. You can use it to uh, do all of the things that you maybe didn't have time to do in the past, or find financial efficiencies, like uh, things we we kind of know. The dark side is is fraud. The dark side is people. Uh, using your data for uh, for, for surreptitious uh, means, uh, people who sell you a data platform, but it really executed in a, in a in a different way. We talked about it a little bit before with bots, but I know bots watching video. That's a, that's a huge problem, but that exists, and I think that's again human impulses. A machine is not determining, <laughs> you know, that I'm gonna I'm gonna you know put all these bots to up my my view count. A human is. So as, as long as we have bad actors in the space who aren't being held accountable, uh, we're always going to have this dark side. I think the great news is that it is getting better. I am an optimist and I think that with uh, GDPR and CCPA, um, things are going to get better, um, but we'll always have that dark side if there's going to be people who are just trying to make a quick buck.